Welcome to the Chief Architect Design video. Our project focus is the 512 design with a kitchen and dining room with distinctive ceiling styles. My outline for the video includes five steps beginning with drawing the rooms, placing the doors and windows, followed by the kitchen design with our main wall including a custom backsplash and pass-through cabinet. Then we'll do the west wall. Third will be our island design. You can see our waterfall island. And the fourth and fifth steps will be looking at our various ceiling options for both the dining room and the kitchen. I will make this plan available for download on the Chief Architect website so you can take a closer look and you can also use the free trial version of the software and follow along. So let's get started with step one, drawing the rooms. Okay. Inside of our program there are several architectural tools and to begin with I'm going to use an exterior wall to create the outside shape. So I'm just going to simply use my right mouse button, click and drag to create the shape. Notice that I'm not worrying about these dimensions that are displaying. When I finish they will automatically place, that's a preference I have set. If you want to place those yourself you can come into the menu and place those automatic exterior dimensions. For you kitchen and bath designers that carry about only the interior dimensions, I will cover that here in a little bit. So to begin with, I want the outside of this dimension to be exactly 40 feet square. So I'm going to highlight the dimension here and type in 40 feet. Notice too that I can also just click and drag those walls. So if I want to click and drag, I can do that as well. So now that I have a 40 by 40 structure, I'm going to use an interior wall tool and I'm going to create a couple of interior walls in here. So I'm just going to come in and create our walls for our rooms to create a uh, master bedroom, dining room, kitchen. And I've got those in place. Again, I want to highlight the wall, come over here and type in the exact dimension. In this case, I'm going to set this to 21 feet, 8 and a half inches and we'll come over here on this wall. We'll set that to 16 feet 2 and a half inches. This is an as-built uh, measurement for a remodeling projects. so I've already gone out in the field and uh, gathered those dimensions. And let's uh, highlight this dimension here and I'm going to set that to 10 feet 5 and a half. Once I have those dimensions in place you can now take your 3D view and you can see exactly what is going on. Now notice that I already have a flooring material, wall colors, my exterior wall has a certain color and that's because the plan that I was using was a profile plan and it already had certain information. If you click on one of these rooms, let's go ahead and look at the uh, structure information. Here's where you can set your ceiling heights and what I want to do actually is I want to change the ceiling height to be exactly what the as-built is. And my finished ceiling height is 99 and an eighth. Now if I enter that in to this field here, that's only going to change that room. So I want to take that number and I'm going to make that my floor default for all rooms. So I'm just going to cancel out of that. I'm going to go into my floor defaults and I'm going to change that setting for all floors. So let's go in here, open up our floor defaults and make that change. Just pull that over here. That way I can change all rooms at once. Had I done that when I drew my first outside walls that would have covered all rooms but since I didn't do that I'm going to change all four or five of these rooms at one time. So I'll set that setting and now it automatically adjusts that ceiling height. While I'm in this view, obviously you can do your design work in this view as well. So I'm going to use my window tool and I'm going to place our first window. Again, it comes in with my default colors and you can click on this window, you can move it around and you can resize it. Now for my windows, I want them to be an exact dimension. So every object that you select in the program has a specification dialog and you can be very specific. 
The window that I've placed here is a generic or custom window. It's not branded. If you want to place branded windows, doors, cabinets, you can browse into the library catalog and select those. So I want to select a 48 by 72 inch window and I'm going to set the floor to bottom at 14 inches. I'm also going to look at the rest of my defaults here. I like those for the casing. I'm going to select OK and now that window is going to grow to that size. Now one of the things I like to do once I've set the specifics that I want, notice that this window still has a selection marquee on it. And down here in the lower section of your screen is set as default. So I can now set that as my default and now when I place a subsequent window it will also place that exact attribute that we've set. So let's go ahead and uh, set three of those windows here and a couple of them over here and one on the back wall over here and over here. Now when I return back into the plan view you'll notice that our dimensions are already being displayed. In fact, let's split our screen, Shift F6 on the keyboard, and you can see exactly what we have. I'm going to zoom in and set these dimensions for each one of these windows. So the first window, I'm just going to highlight, and I want these to be 6 and 3 quarters inches spaced apart. So I'm going to highlight the window, click on the dimension, and type it in. Again, you could simply come in here and click on that window and slide it. Once I've got those windows selected, let's actually grab those and pull those down. I'm going to add one more window. So I'm just going to copy that window and paste one more window over here. And I'll set that again to be six and three quarters inches. Now that I've got four windows in this wall, I'm going to group select them by holding my shift key down and clicking on them. And then I'm going to use my center key. Again, you'll find this in the uh, lower left hand section. I'm going to use the center key and I'm going to highlight the room. Notice there's a highlight. The room turns dark. And I'm just going to center those windows in that wall. Let's do the same thing up here with these uh, two windows. Pull our 3D view over so you can see that a little bit better. So I'm going to highlight the window. Again, if you want to slide that up, you can do that. It's more precise just to come in here, highlight the window, hover over the dimension, and then we can just type in that exact six and three quarters dimension. Shift click on both windows, center key on the room, and those windows are exactly centered. These windows, I'm not going to worry too much about the positioning of them, although I'll just slide them over approximately where I want them and I'll move, move on and place our doors. Using the door tool, I'm going to go ahead and highlight that, place that in my plan view. Notice if I move my cursor on either side of the wall, it will place the door accordingly. Zoom in here just a little bit so you can see that. And if I highlight this door, let's go ahead and uh, grab that door. You can stretch these objects and also resize them. Again, if you want to set the specifics on this, let's go ahead and set the width and height. Pull my dialog box over here. So I want to set that to be uh, 72 by 84. And each time I make those changes, it's difficult to see in that dialog, but it does preview the changes. Again, I have a brown exterior and interior as a default material because that's the template plan that I have selected with my colors. You saw earlier how we used our uh, window, changed the height, set as our default. You can do the same thing with your doors. Again, I don't really care too much about the dimension of this, but let's go ahead and type that in at uh, 3.8. And I'm also going to turn off my automatic dimensions because I'm going to move in and place a few of the uh, doors on the interior walls and I want to manually dimension those. We'll show you how to do that. So in my default settings, in my dimensions, I've got this automatic exterior dimension default. 
and that is turned on right now to auto refresh so I'm just going to remove that check mark so that it's not uh, continually updating and adding dimensions. Turn that off for now and let's take this same door as long as we have that and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it over here and I'm also going to paste that same door over here. For this door on the left I'm going to go ahead and set the width back to uh, 36 and we'll just slide that out set it up that way. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to add a doorway in between this center wall if I pull over my uh, 3D view. This room in the lower section of your screen will be our kitchen and on the upper section will be the dining room. And to begin with I'm going to put a doorway in Let's go ahead and use our doorway tool here. Place our door and I'm just simply going to place that right in this area. Now let's open this up and let's change that to a doorway. And I'm also going to change the dimensions on this. So for the height of this doorway I'm going to set it to 89 inches. I'm also going to remove our casing. I don't want any interior casing on this doorway. So again you see the preview in the right hand section of this dialog panel. I'm going to accept the rest of the defaults and now I've got this doorway. Temporarily I'm going to take this wall here and I'm just going to pull it back slightly and I'm going to highlight this door and I'm going to center it based on the overall structure. Made it easier just for me to pull that door that wall back. Let's go ahead and connect it back up. So now that that door is actually centered exactly in the 40 feet of the uh, overall structure, I'm going to take that door and I'm going to copy it. So we'll just place a copy of that door over here and I'll just bump that up exactly against the wall and I'm going to copy that door and I'm going to use the copy and reflect around the uh, center and we'll slide it around the other way. So now you can see that we have a, a doorway and it's exactly against those walls. You'll notice that I have a stripe right there. That's because of the paint from the interior walls different than the exterior wall and we'll be changing our colors and materials here a little bit later. Now the final door that we're going to add is going to be between the bedroom and the kitchen between this wall. So I'm going to select my pocket door and I'm just going to come over here and place that pocket door in the wall. You'll notice in my plan view here, let's go ahead and flip that door around. You'll find a tool to flip that around and let's open that up and set the width to be 36 and I want the height for this one to be 96. So we're going to take that all the way up. You'll notice that my default for my pocket door is uh, a little bit different than the other door colors. So I'm going to use my eyedropper, click on the brown off of the casing over here, change my scoping tool for the entire object and we'll just apply that. Now the final change I want to make to that door is I actually want that to be a glass door so we'll set that up to be a glass door. And as long as we're in here, I want to change this door also to be a pocket door. So let's change that to be a, uh, a pocket. And I'm going to, 36 is fine. And it looks like if we take our eyedropper and make that change over here, I've got that change. Now, if I take that and make that my default, every time I place a new pocket door it will have those same attributes so it's a handy tool. Now with the pocket door between the kitchen area, in fact let's just go ahead and set the room up to be here a kitchen. Choose from my uh, drop down list of kitchen. Again if you wanted to change your structure information you'll find this 
information for each room. So we'll set that up to be our kitchen. We'll set this up to be our master bedroom. And now I want to uh, add my dimension. Let's go ahead and drag a dimension through here. And I want that dimension to be to the center. You'll notice that it picked up perhaps a rough opening with this dimension that I used here. I'm going to drag that dimension into the center. I just grab the diamond and pull it in there. And now to position that, if you zoom in on my dimension up here, that's going to this darker gray part of the wall. You'll notice there's an out, outline shape of the a line. That represents the sheetrock. In fact, let's just open this wall up real quick so you can see what we're dealing with. I have an interior wall and that actually consists of really three different layers. The interior sheetrock, the stud that's a in this case a two by four, three and a half inches, and then the interior sheetrock. You can see what that looks like in this view as well. So I want this door to be positioned um, along this wall. Let's go ahead and highlight that dimension. I want it to be 11 feet, seven and a half inches off of that. So now it's located precisely. Remember we turned off our exterior dimensions. This wouldn't have picked it up because this is an interior dimension. But now I have that exact dimension in place. And let's go ahead and pull this back to the main layer of this in exterior wall that I'm using. So now we've added our doors, windows. You can see that uh, we've got our basic structure ready to go and now we can begin designing our kitchen. And before I do that, let's just zoom in here. Let's use our material eyedropper. Let's pick up the color off of this wall, paint it on that strip. So now we've cleaned that up. Come over here and do the same thing so that we have a nice clean pass through. Now let's go ahead and uh, begin our kitchen preparation.